Hi guys, welcome to the third video of the series. In this video, I will demonstrate how to perform accuracy assessment of a classified land cover data using QGIS. Uh, accuracy assessment of land cover data is crucial to understand how good the classification of data is or to correct systematic errors in the data, especially if you are going to use it for further scientific analysis. Or even if you, let's say, want to train a machine learning model using this at a later stage, you may want to know the quality of your training data. So let's get started. Okay, here we have the land cover data that uh, I demonstrated in the previous video, which is this, and then the satellite data, which we used to uh, prepare this. I've changed the band combination to 543 like before. Okay, so without delaying, first we go to uh, view and then panels, SCP doc, check this. And then we go to band set and single bands list. I refresh it and then add it to the uh, list. So now we have this as a listed product. Um, now I'll uh, create a new training data set. I'll copy the location. Here I'll click on, uh, basically this is accuracy assessment data set. Okay, now we want random cells in this area such that each class is equally represented. For that, I'll go to SCP, basic tools, multiple ROI. Okay, so the catch here is that in this bar, you have to make this minimum and maximum one. Here also you make it one. How many number of points do you want for each class? I'll take 10 for now, but I would say take anywhere between 25 to 50 points per class so that you do accuracy assessment on uh, 100 to 200 points. Now uh, I check this box which says stratified for all values as in like it will take 10 10 values for all classes in the classified raster. And what are the classes? Let's say if you have four classes and you want to take only two then I'll remove these and keep only the first two. But I want to do accuracy assessment on all four classes. So I'll keep this uh, just like they are. Okay, so then I'll click, click on create points. Okay, now that points have been listed, I'll keep everything default, change nothing and click on run. This may take a minute to finish. Okay, the processing completed in roughly two minutes and uh, all the points are listed here now. Um, you can close this for now. So it has uh, 10 points for each class, but we don't know which point belongs to which class. And that's the catch here that we should not see what class that particular point belongs to. I'm remo removing this layer and the, the key point is to classify each point manually based only on the uh, raw multispectral data so that we can compare our observation here with the classified raster and then do the accuracy assessment. Uh, I would recommend not to start in order because uh, points are in order that we created them. For instance, first 10 will be urban and vegetation and uh, so on. If you, when you do it for a lot of points, uh, then it will be, uh, it will make much more sense. I will randomly jump to any point uh, based on this, I will uh, judge what that uh, point belongs to. I think this is urban. So I'll come back here and keep it uh, one. I'll unselect it. I'll go to some other point. Zoom to layer. That's water body according to me. I'll come back here. and make it three. The other one then, I'll keep this in vegetation class. So I'll make two here and unselect that. Then I'll go again to some pixel, zoom to it. I'll keep this in water class. Similarly, I'll uh, go and collect all the samples, all 40 samples. I have now collected all the samples. So as you change the values here, it will automatically create uh, subclasses here. 
uh, 1, 3, 2 and 4 and so on. So the catch is that uh, you don't only have to look at that pixel, you need to zoom in, zoom out and then look at the surroundings a bit and then take a decisions. A lot of pixels can be confusing also because after all this is a, a medium resolution satellite data 30 meters and there are obviously mixed pixels so that is okay but uh, this accuracy assessment will give you at least a rough idea of uh, if certain classes are systematically mixing up with others class and other classes and so on to check the accuracy we need to add the classified land cover data so that we have the classified data and this both I'll go to SCP post processing accuracy and I'll refresh this so that this updates uh, in the first one classification I'll choose the land cover layer in the second one the vector raster where ca classes are I'll select this accuracy assessment layer that I've created uh, and in this vector field I'll choose this MCID because that's what we are dealing with uh, again, if you in the previous video used subclasses also, you can always go with CID which will give you subclass wise uh, classification metric. So I'll click on MCID and then hit run. It prompts me to save the error raster. I'll say accuracy raster. the classification results are out now so uh, first the so first you see let's say uh, accuracy raster in this you, you can see a couple of points I'm closing this SCP doc now in this you see a couple of points with different numbers so wherever your uh, training points were you will see these numbers and that's uh, what they are the table here will have information on these numbers for instance one represents all uh, built up classes that were classified as built up and so on and uh, so cells with value 10 represent uh, built up classes that are actually one but in classified raster it's four others class and so on uh, this is a main thing the confusion matrix which will give you an idea of uh, the actual ground truth classes and their comparison with uh, classified uh, data so uh, manually I classified 13 cells as built up out of which 9 were built up in a uh, classified raster also one was vegetation one was water and two were uh, in others category so the thing is that you have to check at this diagonal values 1 for 1 2 to 2 3 to 3 and 4 to 4 these should be as high as possible this one looks okay also because I did it only for 40 points uh, to be very sure and confident you can go ahead and collect more samples uh, when you come down here you have producers and users accuracy class wise class 1 2 3 4 and then you have the overall accuracy of the raster uh, and the uh, kappa classification coefficient so this table is also available as a CSV in the same folder you can open it The values are in this form you need to select this go to data text to columns delimited separate by tab if you don't do it then everything is in one column do this and then uh, you have the same table here also so that's how you perform the accuracy assessment make sure that your uh, overall accuracy kappa coefficient and uh, uh, these diagonal values are as high as possible this is this can be a tedious task but uh, that's the only way around of being uh, confident about your data if you really want to randomize your points so that they are not in order as we collected uh, you can easily do that just right click on this uh, temporary layer open attributes in uh, click on editing click on uh, field calculator so in this update existing field we will update FID and here we will uh, create random numbers from uh, let's say 1 to 100 okay so we'll have random numbers now I'll save it here I'll uh, export this to the directory I'll export this as 
this is HP file I won't add it to the map okay so now that is done I'll uh, delete all the signatures here and then I'll go to SCP basic tools import signatures here I'll uh, select a vector accuracy assessment shp here MCID can be MCID you just need to match the fields uh, and only in any one let's say CID field I will replace it with with the uh, FID that we created with random numbers I'll, I have unchecked this box which is uh, calculate signature because we already have signature we are going to uh, create signature in that and then uh, import vector okay so the points are here with these random numbers right now they are in order of uh, 10 10 classes when I click on CID which is random numbers this uh, set of training points they shuffle so now you can easily go ahead and uh, collect the signatures one by one so uh, hope you will be able to do it on your own on your own data uh, thanks for watching this video